Today, I've got a new old 3D CTL for you. By the end of this video, you will know why you've probably been doing saturation wrong and how this absolutely free tool will help you get better images instantly. But let's start with three reasons why you should never use the sat knob in Resolve. Number one, it makes colors brighter when increasing saturation. The math used by the sat knob makes colors become brighter when increasing saturation. This is the opposite of what happens in the real world. To make a door red, you need to add red paint, which absorbs light, leaving only the red portion. That's why more saturation usually means a darker color. Increasing saturation with the sat knob can lead to reflective surfaces looking like they're emitting light. This is ugly and breaks visual cognition. Number two, it has the strongest effect on already saturated colors. The sat knob multiplies the saturation in the image, and the larger the number you multiply, the stronger the effect. This means that colors that are already at the edge of the gamut become garish and blown out by the time you get enough saturation into those parts of the image that really need it. Before we talk about the third and less known reason, let's address the elephant in the room. Now you might have been saying, wait a second, why can't you just use color boost or color slice instead? And you're right, color boost fixes the second issue, but still has the problem of creating garish digital looking saturation. Color slice fixes both of these issues. The sad model is much better and we get the option to get a more subtractive style of saturation. I've hacked Resolve to make it possible to view the sat curve and color slice, and we can see that it does a much better job of boosting low and medium saturation while compressing at the top. There's still some issues though. If we use subtractive saturation and color slice, we still have the problem that desaturating some colors makes them go unnaturally bright. And there's also still the third problem we haven't touched on yet. Another less known property of film is that it compresses saturation, meaning that less saturated areas are boosted, but the maximum saturation is relatively low. This can make images very colorful without having neon lights and other bright colors go crazy. So let's talk about one more alternative which you might be familiar with. If we set our node to HSV and turn off channels 1 and 2, we can play gamma and gain against each other to effectively boost saturation while lowering the ceiling. There are also sat shaper DCTLs that use this method, including some of my own old DCTLs. But here's why we shouldn't do this. If we look at a gamma curve on a graph, we can see that it's the very steepest, right above zero saturation. Its slope is basically infinity, meaning it boosts chroma noise and very slight incidental color tints in gray areas the most. Increasing these undesirable side effects instead of boosting the colors that are actually creatively meaningful. Hold that thought for a minute, I think it's time to talk about the free tool. The Iridescent Color Saturator version 2 is a free DCTL that solves all of these problems. It uses my own iris adaptive saturation model, advanced color signs specifically designed to create high-end cinematic images. You can control precisely how subtractive you need your saturation to feel, while desaturation always preserves luminosity. It also mainly boosts low and medium saturations to increase colorfulness while maintaining color detail even at the most extreme settings. And you can adjust saturation and saturation limit independently from each other to create compressed saturation curves or rain and garish highlights. If we compare the saturator curve to that gamma curve we saw earlier, you can immediately see that we don't get this infinitely steep takeover at zero, but instead focus most of the increase on medium saturations, boosting our overall colorfulness without also boosting what are really supposed to be neutral colors. If we compare the chroma noise with these three methods, we can see that color slice is definitely an improvement over gamma, but with the saturator we basically get no increased chroma noise at all. And since it's free, there's really no reason not to pick it up right now and add it to your default note graph, so that every time you find yourself wanting to reach for the sat knob, you have the best color signs available at your fingertips. 
just head over to iridescentcolor.com free and get your free copy right now.